limited time. So next, I will be starting with overview of Google AI Studio, which is the first in our agenda. So Google AI Studio is nothing but a AI platform which is exposed by Google for end users and every person out there in the world where we can get access to the underlying Google LLMs, Gemini in this case. So we can create new prompts. We can tune in new models. We can have prompt gallery. And we can access all this from the Google AI Studio. So let's. So there are some of the simple prompt gallery or sample prompts which Google AI Studio sets us up with in order to be, if we are thinking what to do. And these are some of the prompts which it gives us. It, if everything goes well, I will show you this Google AI Studio as well. But before we get access to the Google AI Studio, we need to have an API key. Um, and for that, we need to get it from Google AI Studio. Um, sorry, guys. I think someone's mic is turned on, so there is some noise coming. Is it is, is it Rushi yours? Okay, better. So I'll again slideshow. Okay, so basically, uh, let's into into the prerequisite. So Google AI Studio. If you want to access to this Google AI Studio, what we can do is basically get an API key. And which is fairly straightforward. It is just one click away, and you can have access to that API key, and you can access the plethora of Google LLMs. Cool. And since we are into the Google AI Studio for now, there are different Gemini models available to us in the studio. The first one being Gemini Ultra, followed by Gemini Pro, which we will be using in this demo, followed by Gemini Nano. There are some differences between Ultra Pro and Nano. The Ultra one is basically the most capable and largest model available for highly complex tasks. And this is provided to us by Google. Then for Gemini Pro, this is a best model, which is basically solving a wide range of tasks. And most likely, we would be using Gemini Pro in our day-to-day -day tasks. And followed by Gemini Nano, which is basically a model which can run on small uh, Band, not so small, small memory devices such, a, such as mobile phones. Um, so these mobile phones, this model is able to run it on mobile phones quite smoothly. And it is the most efficient model for on-device stuff, which we do from our mobile phones. Since we are into the Gemini Nano, just to give another sneak peek. So Gemini Nano is basically a model which is running as of now on Pixel 8 Pros or Pixel series by Google. And basically, whatever you train with Gemini Nano stays on your device. It, nothing goes out. So now, let's see how do we build actually with Gemini. So Gemini API is a thing which allows us to interact with Gemini LLMs. Gemini API has various SDKs available to us, for instance, for those who are Python lover, we have a Python SDK. For those who are JavaScript lover, we have JavaScript SDK. Similarly, Swift or iOS, Golang enthusiast, Node.js enthusiast, and plain REST APIs as well. And in the topic today, we will be purely focusing on REST APIs. Continuing on to the Gemini API, there are three important characteristics of this Gemini API. The first one is it has inbuilt access to Gemini 1.5 Flash, which is basically by far the most cost efficient, most performant, and flexible model up to date. The second thing, which is this 2 million context window, is quite impressive feat by Google. So if I can recall correctly, this is by far the largest context window available by any LLM. And this is straight away given to us by Google. So this is pretty much sufficient for performing any complex tasks and getting answers to any question which we have, and followed by natively multimodal. So what we mean by natively multimodal is whenever you enable this Google API or you get this Google API key, you get the access to multimodality right from the day, day one. No need to you know, set up a separate stuff for, hey, I want to enrich my LLM with 
enabling images hey i want to enrich my llm with enabling video capabilities or audio capabilities it's from day one you get access to any kind of multimodalities like text images audio and video from day one and since we are into the gemini api we should also be seeing what are the different capabilities available to us the first one is we can generate text obviously which is quite standard nowadays followed by we have a way to interact with the llms with visions followed by audio which would be the focus in today's talk and it's some there is something called as long context in case we want to extend our context window we can even do that as well um, something called as code execution in case we want to rerun our code on some api backend and get the results we can do that as well and by far one of the most cool features is context caching so a way to you know efficiently utilize your token window so that you don't overrun the budget or overrun the window limit and since gemini api is a part of google product or google environment it you can assume that it integrates quite seamlessly with other google tools so these are some of the tools which I have just uh, showcased here. But uh, technically, it integrates seamlessly with all the products of under Google ecosystem, like Android Studio, Colab, Project Ideas, etc. So now, laser focusing. So till now, we discussed about what is Gemini, what is Gemini API, what are the different capabilities. And now we are funneling, filtering our funnel or narrowing down our funnel to audio. So now let's see Gemini capabilities with audio. So when we say audio, we immediately assume that, hey, this is something where we can say something to the LLM and it should respond us back. And yes, you are right in fully. So whenever you say something, it responds you back. But in terms of the capabilities, so capabilities is just like a broad uh, group of things which it can do. And in terms, in, in if you want to laser focus on some branches of this broad category, we have subcategories that is such as describing, summarizing, or answer questions about the audio content, providing a transcription of the audio. And the third one, which is pretty cool, is its ability to give you a transcription about a specific segment of your audio. So let's see about these one and one describing an audio so let's say you give it's a prompt in audio and you want to say to google that hey google can you just describe what was in the audio it gives you back the response you say something to google and you ask like hey google can you summarize what it was doing whatever voice i said whatever so then it gives you the summary back and it can also say like let's say you ask it like hey google what is the temperature today or that kind of stuff it you say it in audio and it gives you the answer about the questions regarding the context it has. Similarly, you can also, whatever you say, you want to, the transcription of whatever you said, it gives you back as well. And let's say if you have a niche use case of, you give it a one hour long audio and you want to say that, hey, what was the timestamp? Or can you give me a transcription about when in the audio the user was, or the speaker was mentioning about cats or dogs? It can give you that as well. So enough with the talk. So how do we actually get started with all of this? The first thing to do is we firstly install Gemini SDK. And also note, for this demo, we will be using Python SDK. So we will be creating these APIs in Python, uh, setting up the server locally in Python, and consuming these APIs in Flutter. So since we are using Python, I have streamlined these, these steps, basically. So we install the Gemini SDK in Python, and the package which is maintained by Google community is called Google Generative AI. You just install it using a simple pip install. The second step, which I have focused on so many times till now, is setting up a Google API key. So you need this key in order to access the Google LLM or the Gemini. So this key, you can get it from Google AI Studio, which we will go through it together as well. Next, you have set it up. Now you need to pass some audio to this LLM. So this is basically a snippet of a function which we will be using and I will be showcasing in the demo as well. So don't worry. So this is a function which I'm using. It's called a summarize audio. It takes in an audio file path. Uh, it 
adds up some audio data, for instance, what is the meme type, like is it MP3 or whatever. It calls in the model generate content, which is basically something, a uh, method which is exposed to us by Google generative model. And finally, depending on what you have asked, it gives you back the response. So whatever I said, I am now giving it an example as well. So this is just a laser focused example, uh, all in one example, I would say. So we initialize a model. We use Gemini 1.5 flash in this case. We say, it, what do we want to do with this audio? In this case, we say that, hey, please summarize the audio for us. Then what we do is we load that audio file. And then finally, we ask Gemini that, hey, just take our respect, uh, request and then give us the appropriate response back. So with this, I will be, I, I will be showing you guys the demo now. So this is my Python server. It has two functions inside it. Uh, the first one is called transcribe audio. And second one is called summarize audio. And this Python server is I have created using a package or a pa Python dependency called as UVCon. And I'm running it in my locally on port 8000. So uh, let's go through this first function, which is called as summarize. Or maybe basically, let me show you guys how do I use this endpoint. So for that, since I have already set up this server locally, I will be calling these endpoints from Python, uh, sorry, Postman. So my first endpoint is basically, it summarize audio Gemini, which is the same thing as here. And my second endpoint is transcript audio Gemini, which is this endpoint here. So both of these endpoints require an audio file. In this case, I am passing it a file called as fun in Osaka. So if you can see the response, so I was just testing before the demo so that I don't fail in the demo, so it was working well. But uh, what I will do is I will firstly show you guys where is this file. So this file is nothing but is present inside this code base. It's called fun in Osaka. And I'll play this audio just for some time. Since it's a two minute long audio, I will be just trying running it on like five, 10 seconds. Fun in Osaka. The Osaka demonstration was great fun. So in this, basically this is a, there is a narrator and he's asking, basically excited, he's excited to share about his experiences in Osaka. So what I'll do is I'll pass in this file, fun in Osaka, and I'll send this. And it should basically summarize the audio which this file has. And since it's taking time because it's a two minute long audio, and we have also a capability of identifying how much time it takes. OK, there is a some error. OK. It always happens in the demo, but I'll try to run it again. So basically, uh, we have two things in the output. The first one is the description. And sorry, the transcription. So OK, we got a success response here. So this transcription is basically what Google M G Gemini API sent us. So this is basically the transcription of this two minute long audio. And how much time it took was 11.82 seconds. And the next, you can basically send it any files, and it will give you a transcription. The second endpoint we will be using is transcript audio. And for this audio, it also takes an audio file. But in this case, I am passing another file, which is sample small. And let me show you guys where is this sample small file. It's also in the server. And basically, this file is 10 second long file. And I will just play it for some time. So basically, what this audio says, uh, basically, what this audio does is, there is an engine start for the Apollo mission, and the speaker has recorded this audio for 10 seconds. So now I will be saying to this Gemini API that, hey, give me a transcription of whatever this audio has. I send it, and 
with the file sample small and it says t minus 10 9 8 we have a go for main engine start we have main engine start so the time taken for this transcription was 2.61 seconds and now coming to the code again we see what is basically what is the magic behind this and let me start with the summarization first which was this one the osaka one in the summarization what we do is basically we first have the checks that hey if the file is present or not then we start the time and then we create a local file in our server so that we run our operations on that local file which we create and then we call a function called a summarize audio so this summarize audio is basically the crux of this uh, api call so this summarize audio is basically nothing but this is the crux like where we have the google api key we configure it using the api key we initialize the generative model to be gemini 1.5 pro we say in the summarize audio function that hey please help us in summarizing the audio we pass in some we prepare some audio data and then we call the generate content and finally we get the text back from this audio and this text is then returned and which is then eventually returned to the client and this is basically the same thing transcription and the time taken similarly for the other endpoint which was transcribed audio gemini it uses the same functionality we have some file checks we start the time we create a local file and then we call a function called as audio transcript so what is this audio transcript this is nothing but in this file we say we give it a different prompt we say that hey i need you to generate a transcript of the speech so again we prepare some audio data we pass in the prompt to the model and get the text back and then we eventually show it back to the calling client just transcription and how much time it took and which is the response which you guys can see here transcription and time taken so this was the python server so as of now we have created the apis and we have tested the APIs as well. So now moving back to the demo again. I'm glad that the demo went quite smooth. So next is limitations because not everything is crystal clear. There has to be some limitations and I will be focusing on that now. The first limitation is the maximum request size is 20 megabytes which includes basically the text prompts, the system instructions, and the file provided. And what I mean by this request size is not the size of your request which you send to the API, but the size of the request which you send to the Google Gemini model, which is here. So basically, when you call this model.generate content, this request size should be 20 Mbps. Okay. And the second thing is, as of now, it only responds to English language speech. So that's why, I, if you guys noticed, both of these audio files were in English, because as of now, it's only responding to English. But I think it's just a matter of time when like, it will be opening up to other languages as well. So now, let's go with the third thing, which is integrating with Flutter because AI is everywhere. <laughs> and so just to set a record, so Flutter, it, and just to make sure that everyone is aware about Flutter, so it's a beautiful, fast, productive, and open AI, UI toolkit for apps on any screen. So it's basically, you can think of as a cross-platform technology, similar to what Facebook has React Native. Google has an alternative called as Flutter, which can run on iOS, Android, web, Mac OS, and plethora of other platforms. So what powers Flutter is a language called a Start, which is basically client-optimized language, which can run fast apps on any platform. And how do we integrate in Flutter? It's basically very simple. <laughs> there are three steps. We create a Flutter project. Second, we enhance that Flutter project to accept audio. And then we send those prompts from the Flutter side to the Gemini API endpoints. And finally, we show the response on the UI. So these three simple steps for covering all the integration. And with this, with that, I will now 
show you guys how did I integrate this infrastructure with the demo first. So I'm going to my demo. So this is my server, which is currently running as well because my Flutter app will call this server. So this is my Flutter code. And this is my emulator. If I can, okay, I can maximize this. Okay, uh, I will put it here. I will now call, press this button, Gemini Audio. So let me give you basically a brief what, what is this screen doing. So currently, the recording state is stopped. That means I am not recording anything. And there is this floating action button here, which is, if you guys can see here, this is the floating action button. As soon as I will click this button, it should start recording. And whatever I say to it, it should record and send to the Python server, which is running locally and internally, which it will call the Gemini API. So I'll start pressing this button now. Hey, Google, how are you? So it loads up, tries to call the API, and then it gives me the response that, hey, Google, how are you? So in this, uh, in this example, I am calling the transcription part only. So like whatever I'm saying to the Google, I make sure it gives me the transcription of what I said. So now giving another example, and it, it also gives you, hey, Google, how are you? And it is it is listening to some noise. So see how perf pitch perfect it is. It is also giving you that, hey, although you said me this, but there is also noise which is coming from as well. So hey, Google. Do you know I'm giving a talk on Gemini API? So it says that, hey, hey Google, do you know I'm giving a talk on Gemini API? So whatever I said to it, it gives me back the response. And let's try one more time. Hey Google, what is the temperature in Dubai today? And can you help me greet the audience? Like it said, hey Google, what is the temperature in Dubai today? And can you help me greet the audience? So this was the demo in Futter, uh, the end user demo. And now let me walk you through what is the magic behind this. So this is my Flutter project. I have kept this emulator running as well. So this is my Flutter project here. Um, this is basically the crux uh, method, which is called as transcribed audio. And this is calling my V1 transcript audio Gemini, which is nothing but the which is nothing but basically the endpoint, which is I have defined here, audio transcript audio Gemini. And it takes in the request. It whatever, whenever I press this button here, it re starts recording and then creates a file locally in the mobile app. And then whatever file it creates, it then sends to the, you know, my endpoint. Since this is a file and my endpoint also expects a type file. So the request gets matched. The processing begins. The processing on the backend sites begins. And then whenever I have a response back, if it's a 200, I stream the response, convert it to string. And then using the standard JSON encoding, decoding, I get the audio transcription back, which I show onto the UI. So this is basically the important function, which is and rest of it is just like a UI interface, which I don't think is that necessary. But this is basically something I thought it's good to know for users. And now I will be jumping back to the demo again, uh, my slides again, sorry. So with this, I would like to thank you all for patiently listening to me. And now I will be showing you guys a demo of Google AI Studio, which I have opened it here as well. And then I will conclude this. And then I will open the floor for questions as well. So this is our Google API Studio. Here we create the key. And then it gives you, you know, how does this key work? How does this key work? And then we have different things. How do we use it is we can create new prompts. And this is how these are the different models we have, like 1.5 Flash, which we were using as of now. And then we have different prompts here, just to give an idea of how, what it can do. And then we can even tune our models in, in case you want to have a 
prompt which we which you which is a specific use case for instance listing recipes or scavenger hunt or unit testing you can just use this prompt as well and if you can take this prompt and then hook it up into your api which i was using here transcript prompt on uh, or let's say any prompt which you think is suited for you then you can have that summarized prompt content replaced by the prompt which you want and so this is all the google ai studio and now i will again like to come to this slide which is thank you guys for patiently listening to me so this is the qr code you can scan connect with me on dn and i will be more than happy to you happy to answer your questions in case you have and with this uh, floor is over to you ruchu thank you so much asim uh, let me open my camera first shall i uh, like keep sharing or you want me to stop i can keep also sharing no problem okay Anyways, let's open the floor for questions now. Uh, Raghun, we will share the recording with you. Um, Netra is asking, uh, can we use the text returned by the Gemini to push it to the Gen AI to generate a reply for the voice, like a voice assistant? That is that feasible, Asi? Sorry, uh, again. Sorry, I was. Clearing some demo stuff. Yeah, it's there in the chat. The oh. question from Netra. Can we use the text returned by the Gemini to push it to the generative AI to generate a reply for the voice? Oh, okay. So basically, you're saying uh, speech to speech. Like uh, you say something, it transcribes it, and then it can respond you back in audio. I think yes, it can be done. Yeah, it can be done. Yes, speech to speech. Yes. But uh, unfortunately, theoretically, it can be done. But reply back in text. Uh, you mean like the person, the Google AI can respond your query in the text instead of speech? Ah, okay. Yes, it can do. Uh, so that there, that's uh, another capability which I was explaining. But unfortunately, in this demo, somehow uh, my emulator got. Just overloaded with memory, but it's possible. Yes, it can answer to your questions. So maybe it can be my part two of my talk. <laughs> also, can we get the code fused file? Okay, yep. I will be hosting the code on GitHub, and I will be sharing that link with Rushi as well. 